This looks a lot like a karaoke machine that uh, Santa Claus brought my kids, so if I break out a song, it's out of habit. Uh, okay, thank you. I, I could use the echo if I was starting to sing, so trust me. Uh, I do have to go to a planning and zoning uh, meeting. I'm on the board in Wellington, and it starts at 7, and they need me for a quorum. So as much as I don't want to have to leave early, unfortunately, I, I'm on the clock. So thank you for letting me go first. Your mother, is your wife Mother's Day, Kathy? Yes. Mary Madeline, she is, and she tells me plenty of stories about you. So, uh, no, but my name is Michael Drake. Um, I moved to Wellington in 1986. And uh, some people in the room have sat through this speech before. I'm sorry to get here again. But my story is sort of interesting and in how I got to this point. Uh, I was eight years old at the time living in Connecticut. And my parents came to me and said, you have a choice. Your father's been offered a promotion. You can either move to Saudi Arabia or to this place called Wellington. Needless to say, they sort of made it feel like it was my decision. So I took the wise choice and said, let's go with Wellington. And uh, they showed me pictures of the place we were looking at. I grew up uh, on the 12th fairway, which was at that time the Palm Beach uh, Polo Golf Course. Couldn't ask for a better place to grow up. I had fantastic friends there. I uh, went all through the school system, Wellington Elementary, Wellington Landings, Wellington High School. I'm actually the first candidate in the history of Wellington politics to actually be a product of the school system. Uh, but I, I had a fantastic upbringing. Went off to college at Florida State. Uh, came back on a summer break and got a job at Wellington Elementary School as a camp counselor. And I met my wife out on the playground there. She was also a camp counselor. So I like telling people that I met my wife out on the playground at Wellington Elementary School. Sounds very fancy. Uh, so I recruited her back up to Florida State. We were college sweethearts together. We graduated. I went on to law school. She went and got her master's in education. Uh, I became an attorney. I worked with a law firm called Fowler White. I've been there for 14 years. Uh, I started as an unpaid intern working at a broom closet, basically. Um, they didn't think I was going to last. The IT guy didn't even teach me how to use a computer, so he thought for sure I was going to be worked out by, by the first week. But I ended up working my, my way up through uh, to now I manage the litigation in our Palm Beach office. I'm extremely proud of uh, my career and, and working for Fowler White and, and being an attorney. Uh, but I've been involved in the community pretty much ever since I was young. My father was instrumental in starting Wellington Little League. Back in, in the mid-80s, Wellington was much different than it is now. And so some of my early experiences was going to ACME meetings with him and watching him stand up and, and plead in front of Carmine Perry and Kathy Foster and all these people asking for money for lights and batting cages and, and everything else. And it sort of left an early impression in me that getting involved in your community can make an immediate difference. It's an important thing to do. Uh, back in the early days of Wellington, our baseball program wasn't very competitive. Uh, but rather than go off and play in other leagues, my father sort of emphasized, look, you, you stay in your own hometown, you make your own hometown better, you contribute in a positive way. And now if you look at the ball fields in Wellington, they're some of the best in Palm Beach County. So uh, when I ended up getting married, I moved back to Wellington. It was sort of an easy choice for us. I have two kids now. My daughter Julia is eight, and my daughter Sophia is six. They keep uh, my wife and I quite busy. But she and I are also very involved. Uh, my wife is involved with the PTA. And as soon as I moved back to Wellington, I joined the education committee. I did that for two years. And then I've been on planning and zoning for the past five. Uh, I got very interested in the local political issues in Wellington. I sort of saw behind the curtain and started seeing things that I didn't like. Uh, after the election of 2012, there was a tremendous amount of what I thought was misinformation that was being spread around town. And most of my friends knew that I paid attention, so I'd get phone calls out of the soccer field with so-and-so saying that they're going to be building a Walmart on the South Shore. And I'd say, wait, let me get out there. Hold on. I'll, I'll straighten that out. That's not true. So I ended up founding the Young Professionals of Wellington. I'm not sure if, if any of you have heard of that group, but for the last three years, we've been advocating for Wellington. We are apolitical and uh, we put on all sorts of social events uh, to sort of promote the town. We raise money for charity. So uh, it was sort of natural for me to go the next step and, and put my uh, hat in the ring for the village council. I made the decision to run against John Green because I feel like John Green and I are very different. Uh, from a policy perspective, we disagree on most issues. So I'm going to be providing the, the people of Wellington a choice. They'll have a, a very different type of choice, but I feel like my direction uh, that I want to take Wellington in is the right one. I feel like it's true. I feel like from my perspective, I offer a point of view of not only somebody who's grown up in this town, but somebody who's raising kids of their own. So um, I hope that, that all of you will come out and vote, that, uh, that I've said something here today that sort of resonated with you. But if there's any questions, I'm, I'm happy to answer. Right. Thank you.
Thank you, Mr.